Hi, welcome to Lodestone. This is Mark Cooper. Today we're going to work in Articulate Storyline. I want to show you how to collect the learner's name and also customize the player. So the topics we're going to cover in this demonstration include, I want to show you how to set the properties for slide advancement and also adjust the navigational controls for each slide. Then we're going to customize our player and move the menu and notes panels to the top right of our player Next, I want to show you how to use a data entry interactive object to collect the learner's name and store it in a variable. Then using a conditional statement, require the input of the learner's name and then insert the reference to that variable of the learner's name throughout the presentation. So we've got a lot to do. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Articulate Storyline and I prepared a presentation with just three slides. And I'm going to start here in the story view because I want to go into the slide properties for each one of these slides to adjust how the progression from slide to slide is going to occur. So with the first slide selected, I'm going to come over to the slide properties and instead of having it advanced by the user, I'm going to change this to automatically. I'm also going to remove the slide navigation controls. So I don't want them to be able to click on next or there's no need for them to click previous because there's no slide before this one. So I'll go ahead and remove previous. Now I'm going to go to my second slide. And with this slide, we're going to set it up to where we're asking the user to tell us their name. And we want that name to be required before they can progress. So I don't want to have my navigation controls on this slide either. So I'm going to remove next and previous. Notice that there's no connection now to get to slide three yet. We're going to set that up here in just a moment. So now that I've got that in place, I want to take a moment here to show you something about customizing the player. So from my home ribbon, I'm going to select the player here in the publish category. I'm going to customize this so that the menu and the notes, instead of having it over here on the sidebar, the question was raised last week, is there a way to be able to get this so I'm not using this much real estate? I want my slide to be able to take up the entire width of my screen. So instead of putting these in the sidebar, you can move them to either the top bar right or top bar left. I'm going to move them to the top bar right, and I'm just using the menu and the notes. I'll select menu and click on my up arrow. I'm just going to move that up so it's menu and resources. Here's menu now is appearing here. I'll go back over to notes and I'm going to increase it up to where it is going to now be menu notes and resources. And I'll click OK. Now I'm ready to get into my slides and I already have a tab open here for my first slide. I'm just going to select that and we can see that on this slide, I have my character comes in at one second and then text at uh, half second after that. And I'm ready to go to my second slide. Now in this case, I have the character is going to be in one pose. There's going to be some text and this is going to be up into four seconds and then the text changes and the character changes poses at four seconds. Now. You're seeing all of it right now because I have all the layers uh, set to show. Let me just hide those items that come in at four seconds so you can see this is how the slide will reveal itself to start. It says, before we begin, please tell me your name. And then at four seconds, let me just reset these so you can see the other option. It says, type your name in the text box below and you can either press enter or click continue. So we're going to set those up and we also need to add our uh, data entry field here to collect their name. So I want that to reveal itself here at the four second mark. I'm going to go ahead and turn these other layers back on so that they are revealed when we preview, but I'm going to move my timeline to the four second mark. Something else that I want to do here, I noticed that my uh, text field and my character are not officially going to be uh, 
playing all the way to the end of the slide. Let me just adjust that real quick. I'm going to select this layer. I'll right click on it, choose show until end, and I'll do that with my female character as well. That way I'm assured that they're going to be revealed throughout the entire length of the slide. All right, so now I'm ready to add my uh, box that I want to collect the user's name. So I'm going to go up and choose insert. And instead of a text box here in the text category, we're going to go to interactive objects and choose data entry text. And I'll simply come and click and draw a text entry field here. And it's using the properties of the slide background. Just going to adjust the, the size of this here. Let me also minimize my timeline so we can see all the uh, the options here. So with this selected, I'm going to go up to Drawing Tools Format and change this to be a white background in the shape styles. I'm going to come in and replace the default text and just type enter your name here. Going to select this text and change its size to be a little bit larger so it's easier to see. And then finally just resize this box a little bit more. And now we're ready to go in and take a look at where this information that they type is going to be stored. We store this information in a variable. And to see the variable that's being used with this selected, I'm going to go over to the triggers panel. And in the bottom right corner where I see the little X box, I'm going to click there and I'll see the variable that's being used. It has the default name of text entry. I'm going to click inside of there and I'm going to change this to be learner name. To update that, the default value also, I'm going to leave blank and go ahead and click OK. It shows a use count of one. Now this is going to increase the uh, more times I refer to this variable, it's going to increase the use count. So here in the triggers for this text entry, I can see that the set learner name, so it adjusts the name here to be the name of the variable, equal to whatever's typed when the control loses focus. So that means that whenever they click outside of this box, that's when it loses focus, and it will update that blank value with whatever they've entered in. I want to add, because we've, we're giving them the option to either uh, press enter on their keyboard or click a continue button that we'll create here in a moment, but I want to go ahead and set the option for them to be able to press enter on their keyboard. With this same text entry option selected, I'm going to add another trigger. We want it to jump to the next slide when instead of user clicking, I'm going to choose user presses a key. I'll come to the key field and with my insertion point there I'll go to my keyboard and press enter. Now do we want them to be able to progress if they don't enter any value into that field? No. So we can we can set a condition here. Let's go down and choose show conditions. I'm going to click on the add button and in this case referring to the variable, so that needs to be selected here, and where it says if, I'll click the drop down, there's my variable learner name. So I'll select that. For the operator, we're going to choose not equal to. The value is the type, and then in the value field, I'm going to leave that blank, so that the field cannot be blank, it cannot be equal to blank, and be able to proceed. Go ahead and click OK. Click OK again. Now I'm ready to add a button. So I'm going to go back to my insert menu. Go and choose button. I'm going to use the rounded rectangle. I'll draw a button here on my stage and simply start typing continue and it'll add that text to my button. I'll go to my timeline and I'm going to update the name instead of button 1. I'm just going to double click here and change that to also be continue. Notice that in my triggers it updates the name of the button. Now we're ready to add a trigger. So I'm going to click on add trigger for this button. Jump to next slide. That's 
that's right. When the user clicks, that's right. But we need to add that same condition statement. So I'm going to click on conditions and add the same condition that we had for the keyboard option of pressing enter. So learner name not equal to a value of and leaving the value field blank. Click OK. And then I'll click OK again to accept that. So we have now two connections, both entering the name and pressing enter or pressing the, uh, the continue button with conditions attached. Now let's go to our last slide and use this variable. So on this slide, I have my first text box is hidden. Let me go ahead and reveal that and hide my second text box. So I have this text ready to go. Welcome comma space. And I'm just going to click an insertion point here and I'm going to use the variable. So with my insertion point there, I'm going to go up and choose insert from my main menu. And in the text area, we're going to use a reference to the variable. So click here on reference. There's my variable. Notice my use count has increased. The more I use this, I'll go ahead and click OK. And it puts in percentage sign, the name of the variable, which is learner name, percentage sign. So that's how we identify when variables are being used. Now I'm going to use it yet again in another uh, text box. So let me hide this layer, reveal the second layer, and I'm going to use this variable again. So I'm going to click inside of here and put the insertion point right before the period and choose reference and use my variable again and click OK. So I think we're ready to preview. We have our menu and our notes in the player. We've adjusted that. We've created our variables. Everything should be ready to go. So I'm going to go up and choose preview. This scene brings up my first slide and that should automatically advance on its own. So it's gone now to the second slide and it's asking me for my name. Notice though, before we enter the name, here's our menu. We can click to hide and reveal all these options here at the top. So let's test this out. I'm going to click to enter my name and I'm going to press without any value. I'm going to press enter and notice it's not allowing me to advance. I'll click continue. It's not allowing me to advance because of that conditional statement. This time I'll actually enter in my name. I'm going to press enter and it advances, but I forgot to reveal the first paragraph that I had hidden before. Not a problem. We'll reveal that in a second. But notice that it's using in the second paragraph that we still had uh, revealed. And I'll also notice that my previous and next buttons are appearing here. All right, so let's close the preview and let's go to our third slide and fix the problem where the first paragraph wasn't revealing itself. So we need to click to show that. But we needed to test our continue button anyway. So we're going to preview one more time. Preview this scene. First slide comes in, gets to my next slide. Going to come in and enter my name. Press continue. And there's the first use of the variable here in the welcome. And here is the second use of the variable. So to review, we've set our properties for the slide advancement and navigational controls on our slides. Then we moved the menu and notes panel in our player to the top bar right. We also collected the learner's name, stored it in a variable using the data entry interactive object. Then using a conditional statement, we required the input of the learner's name. And then finally, we used that learner's name throughout the presentation by inserting a reference to the variable. Thank you so much for being with us at Lodestone, and for more detailed instruction, come and visit us at www.lodestone.com.